In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson explains the best way to make your relationship last longer. All right, so the create your own meaning thing is a rough one. And then there's another problem too, which is what makes you think you have enough time? You know, lots of times people come to me and they have relationship problems. And part of the problem is, is that they've set their relationships up outside of social norms. And they do that, you know, so they'll say some, to me something like, well, we're not going to get married because marriage is just a piece of paper, which is really a stupid thing to say. Like, it's an incredibly stupid thing to say. But underneath that, there's this idea that they want to remain free of social constraints so that they can negotiate their own way. Like, if you're giving them credit for, you know, wanting freedom instead of just escaping responsibility. But the problem with that is, it's like, okay, good luck. Try it. I, I don't know why you would assume that you have enough time in the 30 or 40 years that you're going to be pursuing relationships to actually figure out how they should run. You don't have a hope of that. And it's worse, too, because very, very few people can negotiate. You know, because the, the, here's the way it works. You either adhere to the social order or you stand outside of it. As soon as you stand outside of it, you're in a chaotic place because there's no guidelines. And then you either live chaotically because there's no guidelines or you start <clears throat> to formulate order. But to do that, you have to know what you want and you have to know how to express it. And then you have to figure out what your partner wants and help them express it and then you have to negotiate a solution. Well, I would say one in 20 people know how to negotiate. It's really, really difficult. I mean, just think of the steps. First of all, you have to know what you want. And then you have to admit it to yourself. Well, yeah, right. Like, you, you're not even going to get to the first one in all likelihood. What do you want? A lot of what you want can't be articulated even, you know. I'll, I'll give you an example. So, there's a great study done a while back on the prediction of, mer of, of uh, relationship longevity. Okay, so here was the question. Um, how many negative interactions do you have to have per set of positive... Sorry. How many positive interactions per negative interaction do you have to have with your partner in order for the relationship to remain stable? Okay, so let's say you have one negative interaction to every one positive interaction. Okay, or maybe you have ten negatives to every positive. Then you can imagine a different situation where you have a hundred positive to one negative, right? Spanning the whole potential continuum. And you use that to predict relationship satisfaction and longevity. Well, you might think, well, God, obviously, 100 positive to 1 negative is where is the preferable ratio. And so it's those people who, you know, their relationship is nothing but constant compliments and bliss. They're the ones who last. It's not true. What you see is that there's, a, there's a, an, optimal, an optimal ratio domain. If it falls below 5 to 1 positive to negative, then your relationship falls apart. It's too negative. And it's partly because people feel negative emotion more than they feel positive emotion. Because you can be hurt more than you can be pleased. And so, uh, one that's only 5 to 1 is too punishing. And people won't, won't stay in it. But if you get above 11 to 1, it gets not punishing enough. And you think, well, what does that mean exactly? Well... What do you want in a relationship? Well, you think, bliss. It's like, that isn't what you want, as it turns out. It's more like you want someone to contend with. You know, you don't want to push over. You don't want everything just to be easy. You know, and this is the sort of, um, the sort of phenomenon that Kierkegaard was talking about when he talked about deciding to make things more difficult for people because that's what they need. You know, you know this perfectly well, because if you go out with someone and they worship you and they dote on your every word and there's nothing but positive feedback coming from them, you lose respect for them almost instantly and you go wander off and find someone who's more interesting. And part of the reason for that, I think, is that you want the person that you're with to challenge you so that not only do you do reasonably well day, to day, day together, you know, so that you can coexist in the same space with a reasonable amount of peace, but you also want there to be enough tension in the relationship so that you're both involved in a process of mutual transformation. Well, try specifying that in an articulated way. You know, good luck. 
You know, and it also it explains strange things about people, like the fact that they'll stay in pretty negative relationships. Like, what the hell are you doing there? If you'd articulated it two years ago and you said, well, I want to be with someone I'm miserable with half the time, of course, you're never going to say that, but it could easily be that that's what you're after. So, well, 